Hi, it's Katrina! From rare skeletons holding hands to a lost walled city, here are 12 archaeological discoveries from ancient Rome. Number 12. Skeletons Holding Hands Discovered in Modena at a cemetery in 2009, a couple was found buried together, laying side by side, holding hands. Dating back 1,600 years, everyone assumed that it was a man and a woman, with the female's head turned to gaze at her male companion. The female was also found to be wearing a bronze ring, lending further fuel to the belief that they were a couple. But it turns out that because the skeletons were poorly preserved, it took a couple of years to figure out that these were actually the skeletons of two males. Known as the lovers of Modena, researchers haven't been able to determine what their relationship was. Were they life partners, brothers, soldiers who fought together? While there have been a few tombs found with couples holding hands in other places, they've always been a man and a woman. This is the first instance of two males, leading to more questions about funerary practices in Roman times, and what the story is behind these two people. Number 11. Ancient Dagger while working in Germany last year, an archaeology intern named Nico Kalman unearthed a 2,000-year-old dagger that the ancient Romans used in battle against a Germanic tribe. The artifact, which dates back to the 1st century AD, was found at the Haltern am See, or Haltern at the Lake, archaeological site, still in its sheath. At first glance, the heavily corroded weapon was unrecognizable. It didn't look like much at all, but luckily, Nico's trained eye knew it was something important. Experts spent nine months sandblasting the sword, restoring the elaborately decorated 13-inch blade to its former glory. It was likely used sometime between 37 BC and 14 AD, during one of Rome's most embarrassing military defeats. When Germanic tribes passed through the area, they slaughtered as many as 20,000 Roman soldiers who were stationed at the military base at Haltern. It's clear, based on the dagger's elaborate appearance alone, that it belonged to someone of high social standing. In fact, it may have been more useful for display than action, as it was mostly impractical for battlefield use due to its size. The sword would have only been worth using at close range, meaning it likely served as a last resort for its owner, for when all other available weapons failed to defeat the enemy. Despite the Roman military's long-standing presence in the region, discoveries like this are rare. In fact, the dagger may be a one-of-a-kind find. It wasn't common to bury Roman soldiers with their weapons, and nobody knows why an exception was apparently made in this case. Number 10. Domus Aventino While earthquake-proofing some luxury apartments in Rome in 2014, Workers unexpectedly found the buried domus, or roof, of a lavish ancient villa. Estimated to be around 2,000 years old, the elaborately decorated structure was likely buried for centuries. The home, now called the Domus Aventino, likely belonged to wealthy owners and changed hands numerous times over the years. Initial discoveries include mosaics dating back to the 1st century BC, frescoes, Latin inscriptions, bowls, and amphorae. Six years of excavations turned up a hammery, key, hairpin, a spoon, remnants of a defensive wall from the Roman Republic era, and stone tower remnants dating back to the 8th century BC, according to Smithsonian Magazine. The mosaics feature stunning images composed of geographic shapes, a green and red parrot, and a large pot with grapevines growing from it. While the Domus Aventino is now located underground, it once stood on one of the seven hills of Rome. It was in a prime location near the Circus Maximus, which hosted chariot races and gladiator fights. The house was ultimately abandoned after a century's worth of efforts to level its sinking floor. The restored dwelling is slated to open to the public in November of this year. For roughly 10 euros, visitors will gain access to the sunken villa, which is situated in the basement of the apartment building it was found beneath. It will be open two days per month to start, although I have no idea what's happening now. Be sure to check before you go. Number 9. Torlonia Marbles A series of over 90 ancient Greek and Roman marble works recently came out of storage and went on display at the Palazzo Caffarelli overlooking the Roman Forum. They come from the 620-piece Torlonia collection, which is largely considered one of the world's greatest private classical art collections. After years and years hidden away, people were finally allowed to see them. The aristocratic family started its collection during the 19th century, 
when Prince Alessandro Torlonia gathered Roman pieces throughout the family's properties. In 1884, the prince built a museum for the collection, and in 1976, the museum closed. The sculptures were put into storage, where they remained until now. Included among the most noteworthy pieces are a marble goat and a marble navel scene containing traces of its original pigment, the latter of which proves that white marble sculptures were often once painted and colorful. The upcoming exhibition is an example of an increasingly popular trend in recent years, involving private companies contributing to the public sector in terms of making landmarks and artifacts available for public viewing. Bulgari, a luxury brand established in Rome in 1884, sponsored the restoration of the Torlonia collection, making it accessible for the first time in 44 years. Number 8. Roman Building in Switzerland When you think of the ancient Roman Empire, you probably do not think of Switzerland. But the empire's reach once extended there too, as evidenced by the recent discovery of a large Roman building in the country's southwestern region. Built from mortar between the 3rd and 5th centuries and measuring 30 feet long, the structure is the first Roman building of its type found in the region, with its dimensions and construction methods previously unseen in other nearby buildings. It's one of several Roman structures workers found at the 800-square-meter site, but this building in particular stood out. Researchers are currently attempting to excavate more of the area's buildings, which they believe belong to a small agricultural settlement. Until recently, the Roman Empire's influence on the region flew largely under the radar. This discovery speaks to how far-reaching the empire once was. Switzerland, who knew? But I guess, why not? Number 7. Sacrificed Soldiers' Armor In September, archaeologists working in Calcresi, Germany, discovered a near-complete set of Roman armor. The cuirass, which consists of a breastplate and backplate, dates back to 9 BC, when Germanic tribes wiped out three Roman legions. Researchers believe it's the oldest and most complete Roman armor ever discovered, and they speculate that it was worn by a soldier who participated in the Battle of Teutoburg Forest, which resulted in the Romans' devastating defeat. An estimated 15,000 to 20,000 Roman soldiers died during the battle, which is largely considered one of the empire's greatest and most humiliating military defeats. Throughout the ordeal, the Germanic warriors repeatedly attacked the Romans guerrilla style, and it certainly helped that their warlord, Arminius, a former Roman citizen, was trained in Roman military strategy. Alongside the armor, the team found a Roman shrew's fiddle, a device which was used for locking a person's hands near their neck, indicating that the person wearing the armor was ritually sacrificed. Experts noticed, based on the new discovery, that the craftsmanship of Roman armor was better than they previously believed, and that its designs changed over time. Number 6. Vindolanda Chalice Along Hadrian's Wall, a former Roman defensive fortification in what is now northern England, archaeologists recently discovered an ancient graffiti-covered lead chalice dating back to the 5th century. It's covered in religious symbols, including crosses, a priestly figure, angels, fish, and a whale, and represents the first known example of Christian graffiti on an artifact found in Britain. The chalice was excavated in 14 pieces at the Vindolanda Roman Fort, a major European archaeological site. Nearby, archaeologists discovered the foundations of a 5th or 6th century church. It's just remarkable, director of excavations Dr. Andrew Burley told the observer of the chalice. Nothing in northwestern Europe comes close from the period. Burley also mentioned that the church ruins also constitute a significant discovery. An Australian volunteer named Leslie Walker discovered the first chalice fragment during her first excavation, making her eager to return to the site to learn more. Researchers are further studying the chalice, which proves that some things we consider pesky or disruptive today, such as graffiti, can sometimes offer a unique insight into the past. Number 5. Preserved Brain Cells A recently released study details the discovery of glassified brain cells in a Mount Vesuvius victim. And yes, that is glassified like glass. Don't worry, I'll explain. Published in the journal PLOS1, the findings reveal the identifiable presence of brain structures within a black, glassy material found in the skull of a young man who died in the volcanic eruption that destroyed Herculaneum and Pompeii in 79 AD. The extreme heating and rapid cooling that came along with the eruption caused the man's brain matter to become glass-like, 
essentially freezing the neurons into place. Located at the foot of Mount Vesuvius, Herculaneum was completely buried in ash shortly following the catastrophic eruption that occurred nearly 2,000 years ago. Some organic material, including at least one brain apparently, was preserved as a result of the combined heating and rapid burial that ensued. The man whose brain was recently studied was discovered face down on a bed. He died during his 20s at the Collegium Augustalium, or College of the Augustales, the designated headquarters of a cult dedicated to the Emperor Augustus. Researchers used various methods to detect and confirm the presence of the gentleman's brain cells and identify their chemical makeup. It's rare for archaeologists to find preserved brain tissue, but as this and a handful of other discoveries prove, it can survive for hundreds or even thousands of years in some instances. Number 4. Crucifixion Nails In November 1990, archaeologists in southern Jerusalem found the burial cave of Caiaphas, the man who, according to the Gospels of the New Testament, ordered the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Alongside his remains were two Roman-era iron nails, which some researchers believe may have been used in Jesus' death, theorizing that Caiaphas wished to be buried with the objects because he felt haunted by his decision to kill Christ. This makes sense, as it was customary during the first century for people to be buried with important items. The nails were lost for nearly 20 years until Simcha Jakubovici, a Canadian-Israeli journalist and filmmaker, re-explored the case. He had no luck excavating the tomb again, so he instead traced the footsteps of the nails in the Amazon Prime series Decoding the Ancients. Jacobo Vici found the lost nails at Tel Aviv University in the care of Professor Israel Hershkovitz, a forensic anthropologist. Hershkovitz explained that the bent shape of the nails was possibly consistent with crucifixion, explaining, if you put the nail through the palm of the hand, you can easily free the hand, but if you put the nail through the palm of the hand and stick it to the wood by bending the nail, the palm of the hands are attached to the crossbar. The fact that they are bent is more consistent with crucifixion than if they were straight. Some experts do not believe the tomb the nails were found in belonged to the same Caiaphas who ordered Jesus' death, considering the tomb's plainness and a lack of mention of the deceased person's high-ranking status. And if this is the case, it means the nails were probably not used in THE crucifixion, but there were many others during that time period. Other scholars are fully subscribed to the belief that the tomb indeed belongs to THE Caiaphas, and that the nails within it were used to nail Jesus to the cross. Number 3. Mosaic Floor Earlier this year, nearly a century after the remains of a 3rd century villa were discovered near the northern Italian city of Verona, archaeologists found the perfectly preserved remains of a Roman mosaic floor. They had recently resumed digging at the site, located in a hilly section of the town of Negra di Valpolicella, long after it was abandoned following the excavation of the villa in 1922. Just a week into excavations, the mosaic floor appeared several meters beneath a row of vines in a vineyard. Made up of multicolored patterned tiles, it was found along with a portion of the villa's foundation. Immediately following the discovery, experts and local politicians alike took to the media, stating their intentions to preserve the archaeological gem and make it accessible to the public. The villa's floor and foundation represent just one example of numerous archaeological sites and artifacts throughout Italy that are bringing the region's past to life, especially as excavations resume and landmarks reopen amid the ongoing global coronavirus pandemic. Number 2. Paving Stones Revealed by Sinkhole In April of this year, a sinkhole opened up in front of Rome's Pantheon, revealing ancient paving stones that experts were previously unaware of. Measuring 8 feet deep, the 10-square-foot opening contained seven travertine slabs, which were laid over 1,000 years ago. Marcus Agrippa, a friend of Emperor Augustus, designed the paving stones sometime between 27 BC and 25 BC, around the same time the Pantheon was built. The slabs fell into obscurity as early as 118 to 128 BC, when the Emperor Hadrian remodeled the Pantheon and its environs. They were briefly rediscovered during the 1990s during utility work, but quickly became forgotten again until this year. Sinkholes are becoming a growing problem in Rome. Since 2009, the number of sinkholes, or voragine as the Italians call them, has tripled. This happens because human-made cavities destabilize the ground, especially when heavy rain falls. 
when it comes to fixing the city's streets and other infrastructure, progress has been alarmingly slow. Luckily, COVID-19 related lockdown restrictions meant that the normally bustling area where this particular collapse happened was practically empty, resulting in no injuries. This and other discoveries prove that there are plenty of unexplored archaeological sites throughout Rome, which will hopefully offer experts never before seen insight into what life in the Roman Empire was like. Number 1. Faleri Novi Situated roughly 31 miles north of Rome, the well-organized, walled Roman city of Faleri Novi became buried and forgotten about over time. In a recent study, archaeologists used ground-penetrating radar to identify and map the ancient town's covered ruins. The team's findings, which were published in the journal Antiquity, show the town's evolution since it was first occupied in 241 BC until its abandonment around 700 AD, during the early medieval period. Valeri Novi is well known from the historical record, but was previously somewhat obscure in terms of physical evidence. The city contained a market, temple, public bathing complex, monument, and a network of water pipes. Its facilities were more elaborate than researchers imagined, despite Faleri Novi being smaller than Pompeii and containing a noticeably different layout from other cities of the time. Based on the detailed nature of the findings, ground-penetrating radar is a promising way to explore yet-uncovered archaeological sites throughout the world. While this technology is far from new, it's certainly more advanced than it used to be and will help archaeologists see ancient sites in places where digging simply isn't possible or just can't happen yet. Thanks for watching! Have you ever been to Rome? Would you like to learn about more fascinating archaeological discoveries from ancient Rome? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you later! Bye!